Bright intent, we are here to make your day as bright as the sun. I hope you enjoyed your Easter holidays, uh, Sunday and Monday. And of course, uh, you had your own uh, personal uh, resurrection Sunday and Monday as well. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Welcome to the most anticipated breakfast show on television. We're starting just a few minutes late this morning. We're trying to, we're trying to put a few things together uh, just for you. Now, this is the one-stop uh, show for entertainment, everything you need. And uh, it's going to be very special today, like every other day. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Yomi Ope. Talkpa is in the kitchen. And uh, she's looking fly. <laughs> she's looking happy. Thank you, Yomi. Good morning. Okay, so what's going on, Talkpa? Like, uh, there's been talk of extension mm -hmm. uh, of the of the, uh, of the, of the lockdown. lockdown. But yeah. you're all smiles and, you know, is there a secret? <laughs> Well, I think you would just have to try to find joy and miss whatever it is that we're going through. And I kind of like started just, I started to accept the lockdown so it doesn't have a negative effect on me. Yeah, very nice. I like yeah. what you did with your hair. Thank you. Very good. Now we're going straight uh, to this morning's highlights. Now, don't forget that we're streaming live. So um, streaming live right now, tvcnsdemon.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Also, uh, we are um, on social media as well. Use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC in order to be able to reach us. Now, straight to this morning's highlights. Uh, we don't have that much time. I'm going to start the show as usual with a dose of Daily Vulnerable with Chude Jido. And after that, uh, we love to celebrate our viewers on their birthdays. And this one is not going to be any different today on the show. Conflict resolution among children is uh, what we are going to be talking about today. And we're going to be joined via Skype by parenting expert Yeti Williams. And then presenter, model, media personality, actor, and friend of the house, Nancy Nsime, join us, joins us for a chat this morning. And uh, for the right nutrients for the body, nutrition expert uh, Kamini Phillips joins us. Uh, she's going to be giving us uh, tips on setting smart nutritional goals that you can adhere to. And finally on the show today, we're going to be joined by uh, international award-winning film and commercial director Martinique uh, uh, French West Indies uh, Chris Burton. Wow. Yeah, you remember Chris Burton was in Nigeria sometime later yeah, last year? Yeah, like mm -hmm. I remember. So it's going to be, it's, uh, it looks Talking like it's going to be nice. from home. Yeah, uh, we don't have much, that much time. We have to take the news now. Oh, yeah? But uh, welcome to the show, everybody. And uh, it's going to be nice. So this, this look, this happy look, you have to tell me, there has to be a secret <laughs> to it. Maybe you got some funds that were channeled into your wow. account. Federal government. Amen. COVID. <laughs> COVID help. Enhancement <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. It's good that, you know, um, Try people, to give out right energy. Yeah, and then people wake up and then they see that, oh, these people are happy. Yes. So maybe there's a reason to be hopeful. Now, today is the first day of uh, the extra two weeks that we have. Well, well, the last day of the first two weeks. And uh, it's Tuesday, April 14th. And we're starting with the nation. Lockdown extension, right decision to take, says Buhari. Palliatives from one million more people. Security agencies must be firm, vigilant. And the police of special forces to battle Lagos on criminal gangs. 191 held as robberies continue. Vigilant, uh, vigilance groups harass citizens. How to revamp economy by LCCI. An Easter service undo to prosecute erring pastors. It extends lockdown by two weeks. Oshun begins school on air program. Now, uh, we have some stats for you uh, regarding uh, the COVID-19 across the world. Now, over on this side, we have uh, COVID-19 global cases, 1,915,863. And deaths have now topped 100,000. Now, uh, 119,000 plus. And recoveries, recoveries are not too bad, it looks good. Uh, 441,232 
cases. And then we have uh, the countries with the top cases around the world. This is top 10 here, USA leading the pack. And then Spain, Italy, France, Germany, UK, China, Iran, Turkey, Belgium, Netherlands, and Switzerland coming in at 10th. And then we have COVID cases in Nigeria, 343 cases. Now that's uh, are now at 10. Recoveries now at 91. And then uh, active cases, 242. Now during the month of March, uh, we had 131 extra cases. Now still on the cover of the nation this morning, prospective Nigerian returnees now 210, uh, 2,000. 110 and uh, there's a list of the countries where the nigerians are at the moment and that's what we have on the cover of the nation up next we have the daily sun covid 19 buhari extends lockdown by two weeks uh, orders strict enforcement in lagos ogun and the federal capital territory uh, gives health workers kudos raises panel of ministers to evolve policy on economic survival and expand social register from 2.6 million households to 3.6 million. Raises laboratories uh, testing capacity to 1,500 per day. And robbery, IGP deploys intervention squad to Lagos and Ogun. And food crisis, drugs, scarcity loom. Supermarkets, pharmacies running out of stock. And gov governors henceforth share palliatives, uh, says the federal government. CAN demands reopening of churches, calls for transparent distribution of palliatives. And Boko Haram terrorists kill seven in Borno. And I'll do everything to ensure safety of rivers, says Wike. And uh, we have some photo stories on the cover of the Daily Sun this morning. Arrested defaulters of stay-at-home order in police van in Abuja yesterday. And look at how full that van is, uh, with, full of people and definitely not observing uh, the uh, social distancing uh, orders there. We have the punch up next uh, this uh, Tuesday, April 14. COVID-19, 10 Nigerians awaiting evacuation from UK test positive. 40 tested, infected persons have no symptoms, says commission. And 57,000 new cases imminent in Kaduna, says government. Wow. And a few other stories. Uh, Nigerian Air Force airlifts oxygen cylinders to isolation centers, uh, hospitals. And kinsmen fume as assailants kill Ikiti health worker. I'm ready for cure. I'm ready to cure five COVID-19 patients free, says professor. An Oshun counselor uh, using Facebook to attack Oyetola arrested. Ogun PDP crisis deepens. Kashamu back chairman suspended. And uh, police arrest 130 hoodlums over Lagos attacks. Lockdown, Quara alleges opposition's plot to incite residents. Up here, a few more stories on the cover of The Punch. Uh, IMF excludes Nigeria from 25 nations granted debt relief. How to access 50 billion naira COVID-19 intervention fund, says CBN. And will hand over palliatives to governors, says federal government. And finally, on the cover of The Punch, Buhari extends lockdown as cases rise to 343. The Guardian is next. Danger looms as Buhari extends lockdown by 14 days. And IGP deploys intervention squad to Lagos and Ogun. We've identified 92% of contacts, built 11 labs, says the secretary to the government of the federation. A few stories here as well. I have COVID-19 cure. Just provide five victims. Don't uh, don tells federal government. Bandits kill 11 hunters, injure others in Katsena. And uh, our advisory committee pays 50,000 uh, naira to doctors daily, says the minister. Residents agonize as robbery attacks escalate amid a lockdown. Hmm. And a few, uh, one more story here on the cover of The Guardian. Stakeholders split over OPEC reduction of oil output. Nigeria will make extra one trillion naira, says Silva. And why federal government may not benefit much from the decision. And uh, we have some photo stories on the cover of The Guardian this morning. Uh, armed youths ready to resist attacks by robbers in Akowajo 
and Egbeda, Lagos, uh, Egbeda areas of Lagos as insecurity worsens over COVID-19 lockdown yesterday. And also uh, Osifila Street under lockdown due to fear of attacks by armed robbers at Anifowoshi area of uh, Ikeja. Uh, this, was, this is in Lagos and this was also yesterday. Wow. Uh, these are the stories. We have uh, a few more papers, but these are the ones that we can take for now. And uh, we're going to take a quick break and be back. Happy birthday, about me. And a bunch of things uh, uh, trending. Uh, on the internet, obviously, I mean, the first thing is the lockdown extension, yeah. which uh, the president announced yesterday evening. Yeah. So lots of people are saying, you know, uh, so most people are saying, look, this is necessary in order to be able to um, stop the virus from spreading. Yeah. Uh, because the, the truth is our health sector doesn't have um, the capacity to handle thousands of cases at the same time. True. So. Um, so the government is saying, look, everybody should support this lockdown that is necessary. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of life and death and all of that. So, so that, that is, is the main thing that, that's been in the news. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think it came as a surprise. I think we kind of like expected it considering that we were still having new cases arise. Mm -hmm. But I think Nigerians should have kind of like prepared themselves. But I still understand with people whose fundings are beginning to yeah. enter the red, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I feel like the government needs to do, to something. do something about. So like they need mm -hmm. to do something. There are many people who uh, are saying that, look, um, we work for daily pay. Yes. So there are people who earn 500 naira per day. Mm -hmm. uh, others who earn maybe 1,000 naira per day, depending on what kind of job it is and yeah. what kind of work. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't work, you don't get paid. Yeah. So what that means now is that for, for the past two weeks, which is uh, the first 14 days, there are certain people who haven't earned any money at all. And so now for the next two weeks again, it, it seems like they're not going to be earning any funds either. So that, that also is, is, a big, uh, is a big challenge for many people. So, uh, but one of the things that I heard, uh, one of the things that I heard uh, the president is also trying to do is to extend the palliative measures that the federal government is giving out through the CBN uh, to more, uh, to more uh, locations and more uh, and also more people as well. So an extra one million people are going to be getting palliative measures from the federal government during uh, this lockdown period. So that extra one million people, a lot of them are going to be receiving 10,000 uh, and also 20,000 as well, depending on who they are. So I think it's conditional. So they'll look for such people uh, looking also for the poorest of the poor. poor. So hopefully that, that also will help in, in, in uh, go a long way in helping a lot of these people as well. Well, yeah, I mean, one million people, but there were, what, at, at least 190 million people. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're not trying, but I really feel like we need to do a lot more than just try because, like, a lot of people are hungry, and then this whole pandemic has made us see that we don't have such a great functioning system in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And um, people that work now, those daily earners are mm -hmm. the people who are suffering. And then you see crime rates are beginning to... To go up. To go up. Uh, and you can't even blame them, to be honest, mm. because these people need to feed. I was seeing something on the internet, and then someone said the hunger virus is beginning to overshadow the coronavirus. The coronavirus yeah. And you can't even be angry, because imagine if it was you. Mm. What would you do? But not, not that oh, we're going to tolerate that, but I mean... Mm -hmm. So um, there's been uh, major, major towns across Lagos have been experiencing... Uh, spate of uh, increased rate in crime, crime and, yeah. and especially robberies, uh, robberies of people and their personal effects either in yeah. their homes or on the streets. So people need to be careful during this period. Uh, we've heard of uh, reports from Ikotun, from mm -hmm. Agege, Ogba, uh, Iyanopaja, yeah. uh, Abulegba, Ejibo, Igondo, you know, a lot of areas, I'm sure there are some access of some areas I haven't mentioned as well yeah. that seems to have had a spike. Yeah, in, yeah. In last crime. night there was there was um, a robbery on Falausibo and from Falausibo turning to Hakim Dixon. And that's in Lekki Phase that's 1. That's in Lekki Phase 1. And that was, that was, it, it was crazy because it's kind of like a major route if yeah. you use Lekki Phase if you 1. Use, if you use that area a lot. Yeah. So anyway, well, as of yesterday, 
uh, the Inspector General of Police says he has deployed a special intervention force to come and um, assist those that are on ground here in Lagos. You see, because a lot of the police have also been deployed to mm -hmm. checkpoints. Yeah. So what that means is that police that probably used to patrol your neighborhood are now stationed at maybe strategic checkpoints. Checkpoint, so now yeah. we need even more of the forces to be to patrol the neighborhoods and just make sure that you know they, they, they maintain law and order. There are some locations where people recognize, so when police catches uh, a, a number of these miscreants, mm -hmm. there are people who recognize them. And so that, that boy used to live on my street and things like that. Yeah. And a lot of them look young. The, yeah. Some of the, those that we've been seeing on, on social media look mm -hmm. like they're 17, 16. Yeah. Some of them, you know, so that's the age range of the boys that are being caught now. Caught, yeah, but I mean, that yeah. doesn't, doesn't mean that we should also think that those are going to probably be the only yeah, yeah. age range because hunger really, they say a hungry man is an angry man. He doesn't know where it's starting mm. or where it's stopping. So as much as we're putting special people, I think, uh, speaking of that, I also want to emphasize that the police should try as much as possible to be calm. Mm. Because this morning on my way to work, the, the, while we were driving through and we stopped at the checkpoint, this guy was about to, he's, he's like, if you don't stop, I'm going to break your side mirror. And I'm like, wow, at 5 mm. a.m., are we already there? Yeah. So we need to, like, everybody just calm down because I didn't bring corona. You didn't bring corona. Corona came by itself. Exactly. So we need to just try to maintain as much law and order mm. and not treat ourselves like animals. I, I, that, that's, it's really, really important. So even for, for all these locations where, where there seems to be um, restive youths, you know, people yeah. getting a bit agitated, mm -hmm. you know, we have to employ people that as much as possible, let's try and be patient. You know, it's tough. It's a, yeah. it's a tough period. Even mm -hmm. the next two weeks is probably even going to get a bit tighter. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we, we would like to encourage people to uh, not to be too agitated. Don't go out on the streets. Uh, be careful, especially if you're dealing with police. Yes. And maybe they stop you along the way. Just stop. Stop. If you're driving, stop your car. Show them your ID card. You don't want things to just suddenly get out of hand. And then you're you know, wondering. You don't want things to, uh, riots to start. Yes. Riots and looting, looting of shops. Mm -hmm. That's what you know, we should try and avoid yeah. during this period because once things get out of hand and people coming into the streets, it's not going to be good at all. So it's, it's, um, the government has to do something, you know, like you said, uh, palliative measures are coming through for one million extra Nigerians that are poor. Um, hopefully, you know, it will also help. Small businesses are also being helped. Uh, there's a 50 billion intervention fund uh, for by the CBN to small businesses. Yeah, but so those small hopefully. businesses have to be registered, right? Yeah, registered small businesses. So that also, these are just little things here and there. Trying. Yeah, I'm to not trying to shade the government yeah. or anything, but I just feel like 70% of small businesses are aren't not registered. registered. Yeah. I mean, how do you convince the woman selling tomatoes and pepper that she needs to register her business? Hmm. What, what's she registering? Like, how do you convince her about that? So. Yeah, you guys are trying, but today I'm just in the mood, I'm yeah. in the angle I, of, no, no, I, I, do I more. I totally agree with you. I totally yeah. agree with you. There, there are a lot of people who, who are struggling. If you go online, you know, people are actually struggling. Yes. And they're saying, look, we don't have food, especially those who, who subsist on a day-to-day -day basis. basis yes. You know, if you don't work, you don't eat. So, yeah. you know, so it, can be, it can be pretty tough for, yeah. for such people. It really so, can. Last yeah. week, I, was, I stopped to buy fruits, and I don't know if I've said that before. And to be honest, yesterday was the day it hit me because I was thinking that imagine these youths that said they, they do bricklaying and they work in all these um, buildings that they uh, buildings that they are building, <laughs> yeah. building that way. And so they get paid one five per day. Mm. And then this guy says he was they are not working and he was even trying to get to the other side of the of the express, the mm. other side of the island, like this side of Lekki and the other yeah. side. Just to cross to go and buy a few things and then this this group called neighborhood stopped him. And if you see his, his so he said they use a hot metal on his leg so the, the, like the neighborhood watch yeah the neighborhood watch and i'm like how do you get from trying to get food to now starting to he's like he doesn't have money to treat no, nursing wound. injuries and stuff so it, it, that's why i said you know earlier on that people just need to be careful if you're moving around mm -hmm. have some form of identification something that identifies you especially if you're in a strange neighborhood you just don't want to run into a neighborhood watch yeah. or a vigilante group yeah you can't identify yourself. yourself. It can be it can be pretty bad because you know some of those pictures that I saw online as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know the people that they caught have already been beaten, and they're already bloodied. So you can imagine if it's if one of them is an innocent guy yeah. who's just going along the road or exercising or something. So people just need to be careful. Careful, this yeah.
very we careful. all need to be careful and if you can help if you can help a neighbor try your best if you see you can if you think you can split your food please try don't let don't put the rest in the bin just try and see how you can help the next person this might be your act of kindness that will take you to heaven <laughs> we'll be right back after this we'll be right back. <laughs> that I decided I wanted to take my own life. Um, I was driving over a cool bridge in Lagos. Um, I'd come back from, I think, the cinemas in VI. And I thought to myself, you know what, Trudy, if I... And I've told this story many times, and I, it never ceases to make me want to cry when I remember it. I see. And I was just passing a cool bridge. I'd passed, I think I'd climbed up from, from, the, from the CMS side, from the, I don't know, the market downstairs, and I'd climbed up. And I looked out into the water, and I thought to myself, ah, Trudy, you know? If you just drive into the water now, everything will be okay. You know, everything will be all right. And your life will end. And you will not have to go through this pain again. <sighs> that was like, um, ooh, four years ago. Four years ago. Um, last year, I, I found that thought coming close in the midst of one of the biggest challenges I've ever faced. And, but this time I was ready. I was ready for it. And the reason why I was ready, because I remember that no matter how, mm, no matter how bleak, <laughs> uh, no matter how bleak it, it feels at any point in your life, um, no matter how much it seems that you're never going to go through something, you're never going to get over something, if you can just wait and hold on and wait, I promise you something will happen sometime along your life that will make you think to yourself, why did I ever consider taking my own life? The fact that your life feels unlivable today doesn't mean that it will feel unlivable tomorrow. Whenever I get there, I remember that day in 2017 when I thought to myself, I don't want to do this anymore. And I think about my life now and all the amazing experiences I've had. And I remind myself that there is nothing that life can present to me that should ever make me think I no longer want to participate in this beautiful life. Now here's a second look at the newspaper headlines today, Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. We're starting with the punch today, COVID-19. 10 Nigerians awaiting evacuation from UK test positive. 40 tested infected persons have no symptoms, says commission. Uh, 57 new, 57,000 new cases imminent in Kaduna, says government. Uh, AIMF in excludes Nigeria from 25 nations granted debt relief. That's still on the cover of the punch. How to access 50 billion Naira COVID-19 intervention fund, says CBN. Will hand over palliatives to governors, says federal government. Buhari extends lockdown as cases rise to 343. And uh, still on the cover of the punch this morning, the Nigerian Air Force airlifts oxygen cylinders to isolation centers, hospitals. And finally, Ogun PDP crisis deepens, Kashimu backed chairman suspended. And that's what we have on the cover of the punch. Uh, the nation is next here. Lockdown extension, right decision to take, says Buhari. Palliatives from one million more people. Security agencies must be firm and vigilant. Police special forces to battle Lagos Ogun criminal gangs. And 191 held as robberies continue. Vigilance, vigilance groups harass citizens. How to revamp economy by LCCI. And uh, Easter service on door to prosecute erring pastors. And finally on the cover of The Nation this morning, prospective Nigerian returnees now 2,110. We have The Guardian next. Danger looms as Buhari extends lockdown by 14 days. IGP deploys intervention squads to Lagos, Ogun. We've identified 92% of contacts, built 11 labs, says the SGF. I have COVID-19 cure, just provide five victims, Don tells federal government. And bandits kill 11 hunters, injure others in Katsina. And residents agonize as robbery attacks escalate amid lockdown. And finally, on the cover, of the Guardian this morning. Stakeholders split 
over OPEC reduction of oil output. And Nigeria will make extra one trillion naira, says Silva. And while federal government may not benefit much from the decision. And uh, the Vanguard here has the same COVID-19 story. It's 14 more days of lockdown, says Buhari. For Lagos, Ogun, federal capital territory, attributes extension to community transmission. Says Nigeria now has capacity for 1,500 tests daily. Praises governors, promises to support states. Testing 1,500 people daily, not good enough for 200 million people, uh, or 200 million population, says Nod. And nationwide cases now, 343 Lagos lists, 189. Uh, Kaduna may record 57,000 new cases due to violation of lockdown, government warns. And Ondo 2020, I'll defeat consensus candidate from Unity Group, says Akari Dolu. Armed gangs terrorize Lagos Ogun communities. Hoodlums on rampage in suburbs of Lagos Ogun. Attack residents at home, pedestrians on the move. Youths mobilize against hoodlums as IG deploys special forces. Why we haven't been conducting massive community testing, says federal government. And Lagos records two cases, discharges six pa more patients. Saudi Arabia suspends group prayers for Ramadan. Ondo pastors jumps fence to evade arrest over lockdown. Bonnie light remains low at $23 despite OPEC output cut. And uh, that's it on the Vanguard. The Tribune is next. Why Lagos Ogun FCT will be locked down for 14 more days, says Buhari. And says social investment programs to be expand, expanded to 3.6 million households and urges security agencies to be firm and vigilant. What lockdown has done for Nigeria, says PTF. And gunmen kill local government worker, man in Ekiti, by Elsa. And four kidnappers, eight bandits, 16 cultists arrested in Kogi. Man punches wife to death in Ondo. And don't blame uh, the lockdown. Uh, suspected herdsmen behead two men in Benue. And lockdown robbery, 191 suspects arrested as IGP deploys intervention squads in Lagos, Ogun. A police chief orders immediate rejigging of security architecture nationwide. And uh, a photo story on the cover of the Nigerian Tribune, an interesting one this morning. Some of the oxygen produced at the liquid oxygen plant in, at the Nigeria Air Force being airlifted to isolation centers across the country. And that's it on uh, the Nigerian Tribune and uh, all we can take on the newspaper headlines for this morning. It's time for some fitness out in the garden. Welcome to this wonderful episode of your fitness section with Ben Fit. Today, trust me, it's going to be upper body workout. <laughs> tap, tap. That's upper body. We're going to hit it for those that have been having challenges on working on your biceps. All these Christian mother hands, you will be having challenges on working on them. This is the best time. Follow the right instructions. This exercise is for everybody, not just for male alone and not just for female. Exercise for everybody. So my very first step this today is going to be the working. Take your time. Go down. Boom, 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 boom. Give me double push-up. One and two. For those that can do this, your knees down. There you go. One, two. All what you need to do, take it up. Take it up. Raise your hand up. Take it up. Raise your hand up. And down. That's number one. Let's repeat. The same exercise. Your two hands up. Take it down. Give me that push up. One, two. You see? Repeat. Take it up. Up. And relax. Let's go. Number three. Two hands up. Take it down. Go. One, two. Take it up and up. Trust me, repeat the exercise for 40 minutes and you take time to rest for 20 seconds. That's wonderful one minute exercise. 
Your number two exercise, everybody all the way down. Let's go down. Come on. You see, your upper body, your full body down. So send your hands, bring it to your chest level and push up. Take it down again. So stand, chest level, push up. That's good. Trust me, everybody can do this exercise. My grandma can do it. Let's go, let's go. Take it up. Upper body down. Push up. That's good. Come on. Good job. Let's go. Keep going. Two seconds. And last one. Awesome. Still working on your upper body. That's my step number two. Number three step is as simple as what you can do. All right, take your time. You go in here, in here. You push, two, down. Woo. In, push, down. For those that can do that, trust me, you can always have your knees down. You sit cross your leg and push. You go. You see this? You go, push. That's good. Awesome, come on. Yes, take your time, two more to go. That's good. The last one to go. And perfect, take your time. All right, still working on your upper body, still working on your upper body. I don't want you to give up on yourself at any point. I just want you to do the right thing. I want you to do the right thing. Take your time, chest out, your two hands forward, forward, squeeze, three seconds. Two, three, and forward. You see that? You see the way I'm sitting? Chest out, two hands forward, squeeze. Three, two, one, forward. Let's repeat, go. Three, two, one, forward. Two more to go. Three, two, one, forward. Just one more to go. Three, two, one, and relax it. How you all doing? I'm sure you're feeling it. The last exercise on your low upper body, upper body is going to be hand suspension. Whoa, this is challenging. It look easy, but it requires a lot of endurance. Hold your hands and you squeeze out and you turn to face up. That is it. Have you been having challenges working on your tricep? This is the best exercise you can use to condition it. I do this all the time. Your two palms out, open, that's good. You turn and open wide. Yes, you can see I'm relaxed. You turn, that's good, and open wide. That's good, come on, let's go. Turn and open wide. You have a long journey within 40 seconds. Come on, turn, that's good, open wide. Let's go, turn, come on, ha, and open. Yes, I can feel the bone as well too. Let's go, come on, turn, and hop on. Have two more to go, come on, let's go. Turn, that's good, and hop on. I have one more to go, let's go together. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Turn, and hop on. Oh my God, yes, it's kind of challenging. How do you get these exercises? Keep watching this station, keep watching Wake Up Nigeria, and don't go nowhere, the show continues. Now on Parenting Today, we want to help parents navigate the issue of conflict resolution among their kids. Sometimes you just suddenly hear like loud noise around the house and you're wondering what's going on. Suddenly two kids are fighting. Now how do you remain impartial while passing across the right message? The founder of Premier First, uh, Premier and First Parenting Blog, uh, Yeti Williams of Lagos Moms has joined us this morning to help us with this. Uh, Mrs. Williams, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, I'm doing well, thanks, and yourself? <laughs> so first, uh, how, how are you coping with, uh, uh, with the lockdown? Two weeks gone, uh, two weeks left to go. Yes. Well, you know, it's, um, it's definitely not what we, I think I had kind of priced it in, because from the numbers and following what's going on in the world, I kind of suspected it would happen. So maybe I wasn't 100% shocked, but it doesn't mean it's easy. 
another two weeks at home is tough. Yeah, it is. It is tough. And yeah. then uh, particularly so for, uh, for parents who have kids at home, uh, you know, learning yes. how to navigate this. I'm not sure there's any parent who has had to stay with their kids, especially if you have two, three kids at the same time in the house. Uh, now, today, we want to talk about um, uh, conflict resolution and staying, uh, um, well, being neutral when, when you're resolving conflict. So let's start from... Uh, a situation, generally, let's even talk about conflict resolution among children, because I, I didn't even think that parents would have to resolve, uh, do that, or, or call it that kind of a thing. So let's start from there. So what is conflict resolution yeah. among children? Okay. So I mean, even if you, even twins um, disagree, right? So everybody is going to disagree at some point. And the truth is that our children, as siblings, that's their first, um, that's the first place for them to learn about conflict resolution, about resolving differences, and learning to resolve differences in a, in a um, creative way. I'll explain what I mean by creative, and also a kind way. So if a child at home gets away with throwing tantrums, hitting his siblings or her siblings because they're annoyed every time, you're teaching that child that it's okay to lash out. And that's the child that will go outside and also hit people outside, and he or she might get into trouble. So I think it's important to encourage our children when they have differences at home, first of all, to calm down. So they can't just lash out based on how they feel. And one simple example, I, I, something I started doing as the kids started getting older was to ask each other what happened. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't immediately jump in and try to say, I saw you doing this. Because the child that you see pushing somebody might be pushing his, his or her sibling, but you don't know what the other one had done that provoked them to that point. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's very important when something happens for you to ask them both right yeah. there. So, so typically, from both of them's perspectives. Yeah, so that typically I've seen... That you're valuing both their perspectives in the midst of what just happened between two of them. Yeah. So typically, I've seen uh, where uh, you know a, a parent is trying to resolve a conflict, but usually, it's always in favor of the okay. younger child. Especially, usually, when when the younger child has is screaming in pain or is crying, and uh, so you find a situation where maybe one of the children is six years old, the other is three, and so you always t parents tend to resolve the conflict in favor of the younger one. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeti Williams, can you hear me? I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you very clearly. Can you hear me now? OK. So it looks like, it looks like we're having a, a technical challenge there. We'll try and reconnect with... Uh, We'll try and reconnect with, with Yeti Williams uh, in a moment. But typically, you know, we see at home and in my house, uh, usually would resolve a conflict in favor of the younger child. And sometimes, you know, it's only when you then dig deeper, you find out that, okay, sometimes maybe it was a younger child that was being a bit mischievous uh, in, in that kind of situation. And uh, I don't know what, I'm curious to know what Tupper's perspective is in this. I know you have uh, nephews and nieces. Um, Okay, is, is uh, Yeti Williams back? Can you hear me? Yeah, so I'm curious to know what, uh, what Tokwe, uh, I'm sure you have niece, nieces or nephews that you've had to resolve conflicts with. Uh, so usually tell us how you do it. So basically I don't favor anybody. <laughs> I just deal with the truth. So if the younger one is wrong, I find a very good way to actually call the younger one to order. And if the older one is wrong, I do same. Because the truth is, you have to. I feel like at this point, you have to start making them take responsibility for their actions so they know that you can't be mischievous mm -hmm. and get away with it because you're the younger one, which would make them have some kind of emotional leaning towards, I'm the younger one, so I will get away <laughs> with it, yes. Yeah, so that happens a lot. Sometimes, uh, 
if, even if there's a, a, a bit of conflict, mm -hmm. a lot of parents don't respond because, you know, as a parent, sometimes you're just tired. Yes, but once the younger one starts to cry, mm -hmm. uh, the, your parents respond to that. And sometimes you, make, you, you can make a rash decision because you're thinking, oh, um, why did you beat this younger child? You know that he's always like that. So, yeah. but you, you say that you resolve it, you try and create a balance. Yes, I try to. I try to create a balance because I wouldn't want the other one to feel left out or the other one being right now might want to do the wrong thing the next time because he feels like, oh, well, if my, young, if my younger brother got to be with it, I can as well get to be with it and then I lose the essence of that one being the good one. So it's, I think it's best, or rather I will just tell you what it is there and then. And because I feel like kids these days are a lot more emotionally strong, stronger than we used to be then mm. and they can handle it. You think so? Because uh, I mean, there, there are certain people who feel like um, the kids now feel very entitled because we live in a, in a generation where you know kids have access to a lot more things than mm -hmm. than back in the 70s 80s or even in the 90s as well yeah i do I, I i share that belief that kids these days feel entitled i mean back when i was much younger i had to get to a certain age before i could get a phone mm -hmm. but my younger brother got a phone because he said they needed phones in school yeah and it was it was normal and i remember telling my mom that nope my child is not gonna have a phone till ss1 when I know that during his GSS, GSS3 holiday, he will go and learn a trade or do something and use the money you get. But these days, things just come easily to them, which makes them feel entitled. Mm. And parents I'm, don't kind of like help either. Yeah, I'm, I'm also curious to know what, um, what our parents uh, who are watching right now, who are online also think as well mm -hmm. about this, this kind of situation where it's uh, you know, finding a balance it can be pretty tough, you know, when you're trying to um, deal with deal with the kids and all of that. Finding a good balance because sometimes it's always skewed in the favor of of the younger children. Uh, but you know, as a parent, you always try to you know, do your best and be as balanced and as uh, you know nonpartisan, <laughs> if I were to use those <laughs> words, uh, as possible. Um, anyway, usually that's the case, but so hopefully our parents are you know, taking one or two things. Our children are uncertain. You know, the other day my son told me, you know, we're used to going up and down the stairs in school more than eight times a day. And here I am just stuck at home. I can't leave. And what I said to him was just, you know what, maybe we should do it here as well. Let's go up and down the stairs the same eight times we would at school. So our children themselves are trying very hard to make sense of this new normal. We keep saying new normal, but I, hope, I pray that it's not new normal. It's temporary. So let's not even use the language new normal because that can even create its own level of, of fear and uncertainty that you mean this is what life has become for us now. So let's talk about, you know, other ways to talk about this period without using terms like that that add to the anxiety. Now, as parents, we're all very, we're all very un overwhelmed. A lot of us haven't spent this amount of time with our children nonstop. That's the truth, you know. So it is tough on everybody. You're having to be at home together from morning to night. But as I say, this time is not a time for parents to lash out at their children or to call them names. You know, because when you lash out at them, you're breaking your child's spirit. And your child is only going to remember how they felt during this time. When everything goes back to true normal, your children are going to remember that there was a time they were stuck at home with their family. How did they feel during that time? So if you're unhappy with your child's behavior, rather than lash out, rather than call them names like you're so stupid, can't you be like your brother, what's wrong with you? All those comments are very, very helpful. You have to focus on the behavior at hand. So if your child did not share with, if your child did not share with his or her siblings, and that's what you're trying to correct, you should let them know. Don't say you're such a selfish child. What's wrong with you? Be like, talk about the behavior. So say that is a selfish behavior, if you want to use that word selfish, to teach them what selfish means. And then you go on to say you should share with your child. That is not nice that you wouldn't share. Now share with your child or ask why they don't want to share. But let's refrain from using labels at this time and let's refrain from lashing out. Because when we do that, we're teaching our children what? We're teaching them that it's okay for them to lash out as well. By teaching them it's okay to call people names because our children will do what we do not what we say i think i want to i want to call, i want to repeat that 
our children will do what we do more than what we say. So it's one thing to say, be kind to your sister, yeah. be kind to your brother, take turns, yeah, Mish, you know, them. but when it comes to you, they don't see you doing the same things. Hmm. So that's something else that's very important, I think, for us to keep in mind. And I want to talk about emotional intelligence as well. Emotional intelligence is something that's highly critical, and more and more companies are even looking for that in terms of the skills they're looking for in somebody that they want to hire for their companies. Um, emotional intelligence is the intelligence you have when it comes to your emotions, how to keep it in check, how to respond appropriately at the right time to the right thing. Mm. It's not something you suddenly download when you become an adult. It's something you're learning right from childhood. So we have to give them an enabling environment to test out their emotional muscle. That's mm. On that note, we have to round off uh, with uh, Yezinde Williams there. Uh, we had some technical challenges at the beginning, but uh, hopefully you were able to learn a thing or two. We're going to take a quick break and be back with more. I'm Ekeli Phillips. I run an outfit called Healthy Eating Little People. I'm going to be sharing with you on goal setting in nutrition. Now, it's okay for us to have goals, short-term goals, long-term goals, um, towards healing, towards a healthier lifestyle. But it's also important for us to be deliberate about how we go about achieving those goals. So I'm going to be talking about goal setting and using the acronym SMART, S-M-A-R-T. Now for S means specific. So you have to be specific, you have to be detailed about the goals that you're setting. The goals have to be small. Here, yeah, understand you want to achieve something big. For instance, you want to lose weight in two weeks. You want to lose 50 kg in two weeks. But you have to start by being specific. Understand you want to heal your child. You want to reduce your frequent trips to the children's hospital. Yeah, but you have to be specific. For why am I doing this thing? For whom am I doing this thing? When am I doing this thing? And what is my main aim? What do I want to achieve from doing this thing? So a, scen a scenario would be, okay, my child is always going to the hospital for nebulization, maybe twice every week. Now, my specific goal would be, okay, my child named Obi goes to the hospital twice every week and I'm looking to healing him or take him further down his healing journey through nutrition. I want to reduce my hospital trips. I want to save some money. Now, you have broken that down. You have told us the who, you've told us the why, you've told us the when, and you've told us how you want to go about it. So you've seen you've been specific and you've detailed. The next acronym is M. These goals must be measurable. Is something that you have to be able to look and track your progress over time. So, taking that back now, relating it back to the scenario we created was okay, I used to make two trips a week to the hospital because of my child. If I can achieve making that trip once a week, that is something I've been able to track, it's something tangible. I've been able to put a value to it and track my progress um, towards the goal I've, se I've set for myself. So the goal, one, has to be specific, has to be measurable, not just something vague, but it has to be measurable. It has to be something tangible. You have to be able to track the progress over time. The third acronym is the A, which is your attitude. You can't just have a lukewarm attitude. Okay, maybe if my child is better, that will be, no, you have to have a can-do spirit. Attitude means your mind set towards anything you're embarking on and in this nutritional healing journey you have to have a can-do spirit the only attitude that is acceptable is I can do it no one else is going to do it for me I'm going to do this and that is the attitude required here in this nutritional journey the fourth acronym is the goals have to be realistic you can't just say okay I want to boost my child's immunity right now it is not an overnight affair. It's not magic. Immunity takes time to build. That's why it's called building immunity. It's something that you add layer upon layer upon layer and then you reach that point where your body is resistant to everything that is flying around. So the best time to start is now and you have to be realistic towards the goal you're setting. So fine, you can say, okay, I want to be able to resolve my child's respiratory issues over um, the next six months so that is something realistic you can't just say oh i want my child to get healed from asthma overnight that is not realistic this is not a magic land it's some you have to set something realistic something doable and something that you yourself can do without wearing out 
the last but not the least acronym is T. Every goal you set must have a time frame. It must be time bound. There must be a duration. So for instance, you say, okay, I want to get intentional about feeding my child healthy stuffs, healing herbs, healing spices. I want to add ginger, garlic, oregano. I want to take out MSG from my child's food. I want to add all those anti-inflammatory herbs and spices, which will help, help to boost his immunity and take him better to a, a better place of health. Now that is good. But if you do all of that at once, you're going to get overwhelmed. Now, why don't you say, okay, this week, I want to try to cut down the mat the MSG cube the stock cubes that I'm using if I was using two two cubes in a pot of stew for my child I'm going to try to use just one cube and then by next week I'm going to reduce to zero cubes and then the upper week I'm now going to add in my herbs my spices my garlic my oregano my ginger so that's you're having a time frame towards achieving the goal you have set now the best time to have started this nutritional healing journey for your child and for yourself would have been before your child was conceived. Now you did not do that and the child is here now. The child has issues which you have set goals to be able to help to resolve. Now the best next time to start is now. COVID-19 is going to pass. All of this is going to pass by God's grace and your child and my child are going to go back to school. How about the common flu, the cough, the kata, and the, the things that are flying around? Your child is just going to be, hey, I'm here, I'm here, give it to me. No, so we have to start now. Boost your child's immunity, healing herbs, spices, natural vitamin C's. Do that, incorporate that in your, into your child's diet now that he or her is at home and you can monitor what they're taking into their body. Start now and let's work towards boosting those children's immunity. Thank you for having me. See you again same time next week. Bye-bye. That was very insightful from Ekemini Phillips. Now, beyond nutrition, we also have health. In times like this, we definitely want to take our health a little bit more seriously. We have Vivian Oputa, who definitely has something interesting she wants to share with us. Let's enjoy this. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Vivian Oputa, the Medical Director of Dermacare Medical Aesthetics. I'm here to talk to you about how to take care of your skin during the lockdown. We'll be talking about acne in particular. Acne is a very common skin condition and affects about 85% of the population at some point in their lives. It usually starts off at puberty, where male sex hormones are produced in the adrenal glands of both boys and girls. And these adrenal glands now stimulate oil production in the skin, which leads to the acne breakouts. It can be really annoying, painful, distressing, and lead to depression in some. Now, how to take care of this is by establishing a good routine. And I know that under lockdown, many people forgot to stock up on products because I've had a lot of phone calls from people asking about how they could get products at this point. But unfortunately, we've closed our warehouse as well. So there's some home remedies too. First of all, let's, start about your, let's talk about your diet. Now, if you're somebody who loves to consume processed foods that have a high glycemic index, now that sounds like a fancy word. What glycemic index is how rapidly um, this food spikes your blood sugar, which leads to the insulin release that stimulates oil production in turn. So just remember that anything that has a high glycemic index could give you a breakout. And common culprits are <laughs> pastries, pasta, bread, um, foods with um, refined sugar so the biscuits the chocolates all that yummy stuff these are things that could lead to breakouts i ate a bit and i know i got a little breakout on my chin which i'm nursing <laughs> now besides uh, the breakouts as a result of food stress is another contributor when you're stressed you will also produce more oil and there's a possibility that you will break out during stress as well the blood flow to the skin is affected so something to, you can do to combat that is to exercise when you exercise you increase metabolism you increase blood flow nutrient and oxygen delivery and then detoxification of the skin so it's a good idea to exercise in the lockdown now for skin care since many of you don't have your <laughs> your professional products you can use some natural things now you could create a mask using um, there's there's this cinnamon and honey cinnamon and honey combined have loads of antioxidants and are anti-inflammatory and help calm the skin 
You could also create a toner with apple cider vinegar, you know, a toner, not a bleaching cream, what you put on the cotton round to reacidify your skin after you have cleansed thoroughly. It's important to cleanse thoroughly though, because if you don't have a clean slate, your products will not work, they won't penetrate. Then exfoliation is very essential. If you have a thick, dull veil of skin, you will not get the results you desire. So using a scrub, a gentle scrub, don't sandpaper your face, use a gentle scrub and, you know, you know that, that will help your product penetrate better. Another thing you need to do is hydrate. You need to drink a lot of water to maintain clear skin. Hydration, about three liters of water a day, which is very essential. And you could also, if you have breakouts, you could use tea tree oil, just spot treat with tea tree oil, which is what I did over here. And that spot is almost gone now. Now, another thing, you can also treat your skin with green tea. You steep the green tea for about three to four minutes when then you use a cotton bud, uh, it's not a bud, a cotton ball or a cotton pad or round and then dab it all over your skin, let it dry and then you rinse it off. So that's a treatment in itself. It's so amazing. Other things that are popular natural ingredients, you could, uh, other things that are popular natural ingredients, you could um, use witch hazel, aloe vera, the aloe vera plant has amazing properties so but you have to find the ones that are actually safe to use on the skin not all of them are taking fish oil supplements and as, as well as zinc zinc is very popular now i'm sure you've heard a lot about zinc of late and zinc helps um, your skin it's it's just fantastic now with the exercise it also helps to relieve stress because stress is a major contributor to breakouts too when you're stressed out you produce the hormones the stress hormones and then you also produce more oil, so your skin really suffers as a result. Now, you want to eat foods with a low glycemic index. You can still find sweet things like your fruits, your vegetables, your legumes, then also grains that are not heavily processed. These will go a long way at helping you. So relax, start to take great care of your skin. If you don't have your products, look in your pantry for some interesting things you can use. Thanks for listening and I hope you learned something today. final 45 minutes of the Tuesday edition of this show and we'll try and make it as uh, exciting as we can uh, you know it's the beginning of another two weeks of a lockdown uh, people you know people might not feel too great about it but as much as possible let's try and see the silver lining in this cloud anyway welcome to the show uh, if you're just joining us this is wake up Nigeria the number one big for show on television uh, please stay indoors and observe the highest level of personal hygiene during this period. Uh, stay indoors if your parents try and keep your uh, teenagers indoors. They can get a bit restless and we know how it is, but as much as possible, let's try and maintain social distancing. Uh, stay at home, save lives during uh, this period. My name is Yomi Owope. Right now, we're live, we're streaming on TVC Entertainment, .tv and on Facebook at TVC Connects. Talkba is in the kitchen. I've been begging her to make me a toast all morning and she's not interested. And uh, you didn't even know whether I was gonna pay for that toast, Talkba. You just- you Pay ahead. <laughs> pay ahead and motivate me. <laughs> pay ahead. I'm practicing social Do you have a POS machine? Wow. So yes. I can use, you know, I can use a card. I'm not carrying cash with me. Let's see, let's see what, what happens. Anyway, it's gonna be a great day. Looking forward to what we have for you for the rest of the day. If you want to participate in the show, use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC on uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, looking forward to what you guys have to say.
Welcome back. Well, we promised you that we're going to have a friend of the house uh, join us this morning. Now, she's an actress, uh, a model, media personality, and in 2009, it was about 10 years ago, she won the Miss Valentine International Beauty Pageant and began a career as an actress in a TV series, Echoes. Now, she has since appeared in several films and, you know, she's done many things. I mean, she's, you know her. Uh, her name is Nancy Isime, and she's joining us right now via right Skype. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Good morning. How's it going? Uh, are you just waking up? You sound like... Uh... <laughs> I woke up not too long ago. Oh, okay, okay. So, so it's good to hear a voice. We know you've been very uh, pretty active on, on Instagram, uh, mm -hmm. participating in a number of things that are, that are happening. But how, how's it been? How's the lockdown been? Tell us what you've been up to. I've been sleeping a lot, <laughs> um, been eating. Well, just taking it easy. The most important thing is to remain alive when things don't. <laughs> mm. Uh, I know that you've also uh, tried to be uh, a bit active. I, uh, you, 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 you do a lot of uh, a, a lot of workouts, which we yeah, uh, I work also see online as well. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I work out every day, morning, mm. sometimes evening, but I work out every day. Apart from in just two days a week that I don't work out. So. Mm. so typically, I mean, I know that as an actress, as someone who's involved in. Uh, in, in many things that have to do with uh, television and being on the air. There were a number of projects you would have um, wanted to have during this month of uh, March into April. Uh, yeah. Are these projects on hold now? And when do you hope to start them again? Well, they're all on hold. We plan to go back by the time, you know, this is over and the government announces that it's okay to get back to work. Mm. But for now, we're, we're all waiting. I'm waiting anyway. You know, and um, I was on a project when they asked the ANVCA attendees to go on quarantine. Mm. So they had to, I, I think I got the news on, I think Monday night or Tuesday morning. Um, so we had to shut down the project. That was before they announced the no movement. I think they announced the no movement a week after. So I think the government announced, NCDC announced on Monday that all AMDC and this should self-isolate. Yeah. So, um, I mean, on, on Tuesday, I had to, the whole production had to be on halt because I couldn't, and myself and about four other actors in the movie were at the AMDC, so we all had to just, we had to strike early. Mm. I, I know that also... <laughs> Uh, lots of people have said that this is a time where they reconnected with their families and, mm -hmm. you know, have like better relationships and just try and uh, reach out to people that they haven't spoken to in a while. Are you doing that as mm -hmm. well, this period? Yeah, I'm speaking to my friends as much as possible. Um, also speaking to family members. Um, I, this time you have time to be on the phone for over an hour and just a lot of rubbish yeah so and I'm, I'm i'm video calling a lot like random video calls nobody can see the campus because you know the way i work so <laughs> it's funny because everybody's all of a sudden picking up their calls whenever you call and i'm being called as well you know people who care about me are also calling so it's not mm. a one-sided thing you know so yes it's, it's definitely a time to talk as much it doesn't mean i'm always in the mood to be on the phone you know, I'm, I'm still reflecting myself and what I feel like doing. Mm. So when I'm in the mood to talk, I talk and I call and I call that. And when I'm not, I just be on my own. It's also a time to reconnect with myself, not just with other people. Yeah. I'm also taking that time to reconnect with myself and rest and, you know, make sure that my mental health is in a very good position because this whole thing can be very um, saddening and can also give one an anxiety attack. Yeah, I, I know that. And uh, there, there's a number of people who, speaking of mental health, there's a number of people who uh, have expressed that, you know, they're unhappy. They've expressed a bit of despair. And mm -hmm. a, a number of people have also said, colleagues in your industry have also, you know, tried to provide support to people who, who are in need. I know you've done that, you know, even during your birthday in December, you did a few things where you visited orphanages and stuff. Are you reaching out to anyone during this period? Uh, maybe, you know, I, maybe the I less privileged and things like that. Yeah, I didn't visit an orphanage. I threw a party for for school children. 
um, something I like to do. I like to like a best of us for me, but I just throw it for children who are in the but a government school <clears throat> and make it like their their end of year party. Mm. Um, well, I I don't know about you know I always do think that I'm I don't like to follow the crowd because everyone does. To be honest with you, even if I really want to give back mm. to um, do give away. I probably would choose 10 people for a certain amount, and I have 1.7 million people following me. Right. Um, so if I could give to it all 1.7 million, I think that would be nicer. But on my own, I'm reaching out to people independently. There are a few people who have directly messaged me on my Instagram, and I've noticed that, okay, I told them, send me proof, and they sent proof, and I've been able to help and send them help so i'm mostly concentrating this period on people around me family mm. members who are in need staff who are in need people around me who have worked with me or worked for me who have reached out mm. and they're probably even more if i was to choose people on instagram they probably wouldn't be up to the people that i've had to assist in real life do you understand so mm. um and as much as i have to stock up my fridge i also have to stock up the family fridge make sure everybody at home have food, you know, yeah, yeah, and even extended family, people who need help, relatives, and people who work. So, um, I'm I'm doing more for um, people around me and people that I know. Yeah, which is uh, which is which is also quite important because I mean, yes, which is uh, also you, you want to help people that are close who are in need as well. So, yeah, uh, it's so I've not I've, I've, on Instagram. It's also still a giveaway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Instagram one. I like to do it every end of the year towards Christmas. It's my give back for the whole year to the people who follow me. Um, but I don't do giveaways based on pressure and everybody's doing it. Let me also do. Mm. Uh, rather, at this point, the most important thing is everybody I know around me who needs, you know, should should be able to get from me. Yeah. So w one of the things I, I've I've always asked is. What's the first thing that you're going to do once the lockdown has been lifted and they say, okay, we're, we're now COVID-19 free, everybody can do what they like. What, what's the first thing that you're going to go out there and do? What's the one? No, I said, what's the first thing you're going to go out there to do once the restriction has been lifted and okay. Nigeria is COVID free? Oh, um, I don't know. I think I'm going to probably take the first thing to just get back to you know, my normal life, because right. let me be very honest with you, um, spending a month at home, you kind of get used to it. Yeah. It's the same way you've been working a lot. When you time for you to stay at home, you're a bit restless because you're so used to working and being outdoors. So being at home and being, and, you know, um, mentally telling myself that this is my life and I should try and adjust to this, you get yeah. Once it's off, I'd need at least a few days or a week to reschedule. Everybody has to know because nobody knows when it's really off. So nobody's really booking anything ahead. Yeah. You know, so then I have to now use the first week to plan and make sure everything is in place before I get out. But I'm still going to the grocery shop to, to shop to buy things. I'm still going to the pharmacy to buy things. You know, so it's not like I'm just indoors without sunlight. You know, right, it's, right. Not that, it's not People need to understand in Nigeria, it's really not that. You know, you can still go to grocery shop. Yeah, they put out hours in which you can go to the grocery shop and the pharmacies. You know, and for your safety, <clears throat> excuse me, but for your safety, you just cannot go and visit friends, go to parties, go to large gatherings. It's yeah. for your safety. It's really not about the government. It's hmm. for your safety. But what you can do is you can go and restock on food um, while observing precautionary measures like washing your hands, sanitizing, and giving at least eight meters between you and somebody else. Yeah. You know, you can still go to the pharmacy to buy drugs. So you can still see some that you can still go and buy for your generator if you have a generator. Mm. You know, so um, you can still go out. You just cannot be in parties or in large gatherings. So, yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that piece of advice. Uh, now, if you wanted to encourage someone, I mean, just as we're rounding off uh, this conversation, okay. if you wanted to encourage someone out there who's uh, a bit apprehensive about the next 14 days, what are you going to say to them uh, right now, live on the show? Um, what I'd say is you need to look at it this way. The earth needs to heal. You know, for so many years, man has basically cared about working and going out every day. And I learned that in countries like Italy, and, you know, some other countries in Europe, they've started seeing doping for the first time. 
um, animals who are coming into town, you know, and the wildlife is basically just doing better. So I feel like this is our opportunity to let the earth take a break. We're not really giving it a break. So if, you, if your car doesn't need to be out, don't take it out. Do you understand? Um, for the sake of pollution, let's reduce that. But if you're home and you're struggling with, oh my gosh, how do I see it? This is how I see it. I see that the earth needs to heal. Let me give the earth some time as long as it needs to heal. Let me give the earth some time as long as it needs. Um, the deadly virus is in town. The only way that we can make sure that it goes away and we can get back to our normal life and people don't die in masses, because trust me, this is Nigeria. People die in masses, there'll be people on the road. There'll be dead bodies on the road because... If you hear now, you hear that most of the mushrooms are, are, are fully are full. So in order for us to actually put this thing in place and make sure it doesn't go around and start to affect people that we know personally, we have to stay indoors and just let this pass and let the government do what they can do to curb it. So it really depends on you as citizens. Um, a couple countries didn't take it seriously, and now you're hearing that their death toll is into 20,000, 60,000, in fact, the cases are over 100,000. I pray that never happens in Nigeria. But for another day, for it not to happen, we really need to sit at home and let this pass. So just take care of yourself. Work out. It's such a great physical and mental um, well, great for your physical and mental well-being. Um, cook what you do, what you love to do. Dance, eat, relax. It's your opportunity to actually relax and not feel guilty about it. Because trust me, the same problem you have. People all over the world have the same problem. So worrying about this isn't an issue right now. Just mm. let it pass and then we can worry after. Not worry twice. Worry now, worry then. Just have fun with it. Relax and just take time mm. off, you know. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nancy Sime, joining us uh, live on the phone there and just okay. giving us some advice. Uh, relax, so chill, you know. Uh, you know, do okay. what you love to do and uh, try and not worry so much during this mm -hmm. period. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, reach out again uh, before uh, this whole thing is over and find out how you're holding up. All right, okay, so talk great. to you later. Nice. Now you so we okay. have to take a quick break and we'll be back once again. Finally on the show this morning, we're going to be joined by international award-winning film and commercial director from Martinique has a, a location in French in the French West Indies. Now he graduated at Ezra uh, and High School, uh, International High End uh, Academy, located in Paris, which specializes in uh, cinematography, TV broadcasting, script writing, and a lot more. Now Chris Borton is joining us right now live on the show. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. How's it going? Well, it's it's uh, well, it's pretty early in the morning here in the Caribbean. It's, it's three thirty a.m. So uh... <laughs> we have you up at two in the morning. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, sure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're live right now, and uh, we can see you very clearly. <laughs> Uh, so how okay. are you holding up with this lockdown uh, and social distancing, everything that's been happening uh, right, uh, well, over, the la over the last month or so? Yeah, so uh, I've been hour in, um, in Lagos about um, a couple of uh, weeks ago. So when I get back here, um, I was supposed uh, to stay. Actually, I did it. I'm doing it right now. I'm supposed to stay uh, 14 days um, lockdown, full lockdown. So uh, I have no way to move or to go anywhere. And I have um, a policeman coming uh, twice a week at my home to check if I'm, I'm home, not moving and not going anywhere. So why are you being locked down? Is it because you traveled into the country? But like back yes. into your country? Uh, yeah. Yes, as I was, I was abroad, I was in Lagos. Um, okay. So when, when I get back, I, 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 um, I spent two days in Paris. Oh. So when I get back to, to Martinique, um, I, I have to, to lock down and make sure that, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not um, contaminated by, by the, the famous virus. 
<laughs> yeah. So um, how are things in, in, in Martinique in general uh, with regards to uh, the coronavirus and the management? Uh, because each country is trying to manage this on their own and do it uh, based on uh, the challenges on the ground. So how are things in Martinique right now? Well, right now, um, hopefully, we are, everybody is locked down, actually. And the French president, because we are part of France, just announced that we're going to stay one more month, an entire month, uh, more in, in, in lockdown. And um, as you might, may know or not, uh, in France, there is some difficulties uh, having uh, some equipment, especially for, for the healthcare uh, people. But in Martinique, we have private companies that has found a way to, to bring some equipment on the island. So um, in terms of, of masks and, and other medical equipment, we have uh, everything needed, thanks fully, thanks to those, those uh, private companies. Everybody's on lockdown, nobody goes outside. Um, people um, follow this very strictly. And uh, we have also, um, um, another, uh, um, the, the police don't allow any, any, anything to, to go uh, from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. So it's total lockdown. If you go out, you get arrested hmm. and you, you get a bill. And so everybody is on ultra lockdown right now on, on the other. Hmm. But how are the cases in the country? Are they skyrocketing or are they managing it well? Well, actually, um, it's, it's growing slowly, uh, hopefully. We are, we are under 100 cases for now, okay. and uh, it's slowing down thanks to the, to the lockdown, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, I think we have uh, the luck of having uh, good weather, so the, the virus spread less easily here. And as we are on the island, it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult uh, from, for strangers to get to the island. Yeah. except from boat and, and plane and not right now nobody can enter the island and as a, an insular um, territory it's less easy to to have um, more case than than a big country or, or like that so we, we we still under 100 case thankfully because we only have uh, 400,000 inhabitants so if we get over 100 it's going to be very hard so we try to stay under 100 and for now it's still and the right hundred cases. Yeah, so I, I like that. So the, at least that's good news. Let's try and keep it on the hundred. Now uh, let's talk about your projects. I know that uh, you had a busy year last year, 2019, and of course uh, it's your work that brought you to Africa and brought you to Nigeria as well. Uh, are you able to work under lockdown? I, I know there's a lot of uh, people who work on their computers, people who do special effects post-production and, and things like that. You, um, it doesn't matter if you're under a lockdown, you can still work. But are you able to work? Well, uh, yeah, I am able to work on, on my personal projects. Right now, there is no more um, clients trying to, to do stuff right now because uh, of, of, of what's going on out there. Uh, but there is still uh, post-production I can do, and especially on, on, on my, special, my personal work. And, uh, and especially on the short movie that we, we, uh, we've been lucky to shoot uh, about a couple of weeks ago in, in Lagos. That's my, that was my very first project uh, in Nigeria and, and, and in Lagos. And I, I, I'm able to work on it, thankfully. And, uh, and we'll be able to, to put it out there um, very soon. Yeah. Mm. So how was your experience considering where you're coming from versus filming in Nigeria? What were the challenges that you faced? Um, well, <laughs> uh, the first challenge is, is the unknown, you know, you, you are, uh, you're coming to a new country and, and Lagos is very specific. Nigeria has its, speci uh, its specificity uh, in terms of, of how people work and, and how to interact. It was a test run for us um, because as uh, uh, the first time I, I went on your show in December, I told you guys that um, I, I was planning to, to build a company in Lagos, here in yeah. Lagos, and, it, and it's done right now. So it's called HBK. And we started to build a small team and we started to work together. Um, I, it's, it's, you know, it's when you, you, you start from scratch, you, you have to learn. Um, but the thing that strikes me here, um, besides the, the big difficulties, is the possibilities. I mean, this is the only country on earth uh, where you can have people starting to work at 2 a.m. You just call them on the phone and say, oh, we have an emergency. Can you come on set right now? And they come on set. This is insane. <laughs> this is our, 
<laughs> I'm very, I was baffled by by the the, the you know the, the the energy and the and the, and the working uh, capacity of people of, of of Legos. I was like, wow, those guys just wake up at midnight and they are on set at 2 a.m. shooting. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, wow. That's that's because that's because if they call you if they call you and you say you're not available, there's somebody else who's going to be available. Exactly. Trust me, at that time. So there's. A uh, few jobs, lots of people ready to work. Sure. Uh, that's that's how it is. That's I, how it is here. I've been shooting around the world, and this is the only country for now that <laughs> this happened. I'm really very impressed. <laughs> yeah, excellent, excellent. So um, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, are you getting some speed with your work? I know you're working on on, on uh, personal projects now, and is it? Do you work faster now, or would you have needed people to join you on some of these uh, things that you're doing, especially with the post production work? Well, um, right now I, I'm forced to do the, the post production myself, except, except for the, the audio and the music. Hopefully, thanks to that that lockdown. Um, Many professionals are available, at, at, actually. They are at home. Some have, have their, their studio at home. They are, able, they are able to work at home. And they are super available, so you can contact them and, and start working on, on, on stuff. Um, yeah, people are going to be focusing on working from home. And people like engineers, um, sound designers, um, editors, color grader, um, still gonna work. Actually, uh, there's still work to do, and and yeah, right now it's a good time for for post production and and that kind of, of work. So hopefully it's 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 still on the go. Uh, mm. But shooting, all, all shootings are stopped right now, and people are are writing, prepping for the for the after after Corona. Yeah. After Corona, looking forward to everyone yeah. is looking forward yeah. to after the coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe in December, but we're gonna be ready. <laughs> well, it's saying that people are prepping for after Corona. So, um, why you came to shoot in Nigeria? Did you get to finish, or did you have to put it on hold? No, we were very lucky and very focused. Uh, when I I, I I I I get to Nigeria, friends were starting to get seriously affected by the virus. Five days after um, my landing, um, France was closed. And I, I knew that it's going to be very tight to, to work. So we, we started to focus on, on make these things happen. And we shot it in two nights. It was very tough, very difficult. But we knew that it was on only window um, to be able to, to have all the shots done. And, and we managed to do it. It was very difficult and hard. Uh, again, I want to thank all my team, if they're watching the show right now, to tell them, tell them how, how I'm very proud of, of what we have accomplished. And yeah, it was a small window to, to have, and we taken it, and, 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 and it's done. The shooting is completed. We have all, everything we, we need. And right now, it's, uh, it's post-production, yeah. Hmm. Chris Burton, uh, it's been awesome talking to you. Uh, sorry we had to keep you awake at 2 a.m. <laughs> Even though we know you're on lockdown, so after a while you just lose a sense of day or night. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us on the show uh, this morning. Yeah, thank you. And thank well you done, well me. done. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Thank you, thank you very much. I'll be very soon with you guys and uh, show you uh, the results. Of yeah, course. that'll be nice. That'll be nice. All right, then that was nice uh, yeah, uh, talking nice. to Chris. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's um, this is the time if you have any post-production work to do yeah. that's been. That it's been lying fallow. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a script to write, this is also a good time to this write. This is the time anything you thought that you wanted to try out, this is the time. Like, I think the world is kind of like open to, oh, let's say what you have, no one is judging. Yeah. If you try and fail, try again. This is also a good time to learn how to dance uh, you on mean, YouTube. You, that's for you with your axe. <laughs> my your, axe your dances. Axe da zanku. People love my zanku. Wow, uh, you, you know, don't have honest people. People around. love it. So you don't people have love it. people like uh, Otherwise, I'll just But guess what, guys? Yomi is definitely going to show us his dance routines in the next, the next time he's on the show. <laughs> he definitely <laughs> has to take these classes. He, can, he has uh, to practice what he preaches. Yeah. Yeah, just the, you know, I'm going to give you the, <laughs> the karate zanku. It's called the it. karate zanku. I invented that, that dance step. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Anyway, we have to start rounding off the show. A uh, big thank you to our friends, everyone for joining us on the show today. Yes. Everyone who, were, who was able to participate. Yeti Williams, uh, 
uh, spoke to all, uh, earlier on and used to, uh, there was a doctor as well yes. that, that joined Vivian us. Oputa. Vivian Oputa on the show. And for all those who sent in their comments on social media. Yeah, yes. all, yeah those who participated on social media, thank you so much. Uh, we couldn't take your comments, but we'll ensure that we like your comments. And respond to Yeah, <laughs> Nancy Sime, thank you for joining us. And finally, Chris Burton. Uh, just now, 2 a.m. over, over. Uh, in the West Indies. Mm. Well, until tomorrow, don't go anywhere. It's your favorite breakfast show in the whole world. Wake <laughs> up, Nigeria. We love you, and we'll definitely see you tomorrow. Bye. Mwah.